Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Chaos Rain here. This time around I am going to be back in the standard and I'm going to be showing you what I've been working on as far as farming. Now I know there is a lot of um, a lot of profit to be made in um, in heist and as such I have decided to go out of my way and roll some watchstones and kind of show you what you're going to be looking at to try and get started on this. Now I will uh, put a full disclaimer, I have tried two different methods with this. One is increasing the amount of blueprints that you drop, the other is increasing the amount of markers and this is the one I'm going over now. So as such, uh, as such, um, hold on, let me go to my hideout. As such, there is a kind of a little method I guess you can call it. I'm only picking maps that are really small, really really short, and really easy to run for this because on on the flip side I am going to be, you know, turbo running Cyrus. I want to, you know, get him down as fast as possible. Just get get whatever currency I can up. And if I can do it, great. If not, great. So, uh, let's get started. First for, first and foremost, we are in the Arthane. And we are taking the both of the all the notables, not both of them, all of the notables, such as secret stash, which is increased uh, chance to contain the smuggler's cache, and inside job, which is increased chance to drop a blueprint, and 10% chance to drop fully revealed. Now I will say I've done about 40-ish um, maps, and I only got one fully revealed blueprint. And I'm actually going to up the price because I can. And uh, it's not really that great, you know what I mean? It's it's you can definitely get uh, more if you're a little luckier. However, it's uh, it's still good. The increased chance is an increase; it is not a guarantee. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so what ends up happening is uh, one out of every three or four maps you end up getting a blueprint, and then one out of ten of those ends up being fully revealed. Well, uh, let me. I, I actually forgot to get my maps kind of round up so let me get some Lyra Arthane maps so you can kind of see where I'm at. I was actually running a little bit of uh, contracts before I went to sleep so I just kind of forgot. There we go, Castle Ruins is fine. Now I don't really care too much about the mods on these because the quantity and everything like that has literally zero to do with your uh, with your heisting. You're not gonna get more markers. You're not. Gonna, you might get more contracts and blueprints technically from the mobs, but I haven't really noticed too much of a change. So I just, I just like get them whatever, however they are, and then it, obviously I don't, you know, if they have reflect, I roll over it. So uh, with this method, you are gonna be spending six chaos per, and six chaos per is by far probably the best you can you can do and it's well worth it so just to, just so you can kind of see um, what we're doing I'm gonna put this away in here and remember we are running four of these types of watchstones so all of the watchstones have increased stack size of markers found in area all of mine got I got lucky as hell and got four tier ones I don't know how well I got five tier ones but I got them in about seven to eight hundred and I got them trying to roll the increased blueprints. I actually have the blueprint ones. If I can, hold on, let me find them. I have the blueprint ones rolled, and I tried them out for a couple of maps, and it didn't really feel like I was dropping too many more. Uh, probably because the numbers are inherently so low. All right, they're over here. And yeah, so we have four percent more, six percent more, five percent more, and. It's, it doesn't really feel like it's it's a lot more. However, I will say that um, one thing I did I did notice is that blueprints do drop on juiced maps a lot more often, and this probably would scale very well if you decided to, <coughs> as such, maybe uh, give that a shot if that's your kind of thing. Without further ado, let's uh, go in and see about uh, see about getting this kind of uh, rounded off. Now you, with the six chaos, you are guaranteed two smugglers caches. Like I said, it's it's a uh, one out of every four-ish maps that you get a blueprint because it's not a more blueprint; it's an increase. So it's just a ba increase off the base number. So you don't expect them every time. As you see, we got big stacks of markers right there. I got another 
contract and uh, I can go over something else um, something else kind of a part three or four of this it'll be part four because this is part three um, a part four of this video and the part four when I when I uh, get to it will will be the benefits of running unique contracts and why you shouldn't uh, just skip over them or just leave them on the floor or anything like that let me just kind of kill everything real quick I gotta check for another looks like I already spawned Drox which is cool uh, I don't think I have another smuggler's cache so you're guaranteed two, and then of course you have the the uh, innate like it's like four percent or five percent to get it, and then plus ten percent flat to get it on your uh, on your bias. Now there is a watchstone notable that says um, increased chance to find a cache, and they they not only stack but they can uh, each individually proc. I believe I haven't I haven't uh, tested it enough to you know see if you can get four additional caches but i mean i'd imagine if you could it'd be pretty cool and as you see that was a really quick map we have two contracts that we got or three contracts that we got and we got 1500 markers now 1500 markers for one map is pretty strong because if you think about it this way markers uh markers are usually one to two x per 50k and just in the markers alone you're going to be close to breaking even on your thing then then not to mention you do get like you know contracts and some of the contracts are better than others demolition is uh, pretty good deception you know all that's pretty good so let's just uh put away the unique ones all right we're gonna do our next map real quick just to kind of give you a heads up and then after after I do a couple more maps I'm going to go over the rogues gear and what exactly you need to be doing while running it this way you can kind of get a, a look and a a what do you call it basically to study both aspects of practicing a heist and how to make the best of it and get the most out of it now there are several ways that <coughs> excuse me several ways that you can min max things and heist and several ways that you can just kind of there's several several ways you can main max them or there and or there's several ways you can just kind of make it so they're good enough to keep running them now i'm gonna kind of show you a way how to make them just subpar not like crazy wait did i i think i added the wrong craft on here unless that's a natural harvest if i added the wrong craft i'll just i'll just leave after boss uh i think i did oops Well, don't do what I did and waste 12 chaos to get a harvest that's, you know, garbage. Oh, no, I didn't. There we go. Cool. I just got to find the other one. Unless that was a natural one. Anyway, um, so yeah, there's, um, there's, there's plenty of ways to run heist and there's plenty of ways to make it either super good for you or just kind of subpar for you and to make it really valuable for you it's it can uh, it can cost anywhere between like a couple hundred chaos to several x uh investment to make it just like runnable to where you don't really need too much else you're, you're able to run what you need to run it's uh pretty inexpensive and i'll i'll be kind of rolling a a uh, a few items a, a few gear pieces to show you what it's like and what you're going to end up spending so let me just quickly dispatch this guy, get his mats, and leave. <coughs> Alright, so I'm gonna put my... Come on, I'm using my busted controller, so it tends to veer. Alright. I'm gonna put my unique contract in here. As as you see, I save all my unique contracts, and I do that for good reason. I'll get to that. I'll get to that in the next video, because it's a it's gonna be an explanation that I'm gonna have to like show you <laughs> more than anything. But so basically, that's that. That's uh, my farming method, and my reasoning behind it is one: you're always gonna get at least one contract, and deception contracts are by far the most valuable. 
Deceptions on average are anywhere between 8 to 12 C and they give you so much for them you usually just in one deception you're gonna make your money back just off the drops and then you're gonna make even more more if you do the blueprints afterwards so aside from that we also made about uh, you know two three thousand coins I actually like I, I just combined them without thinking and you know that's that's pretty good too because 50k coins as I said sells I'm selling mine for 3x in standard. I know they're about 1 to 2x in league, but uh, I am on console, so I know the price different is, there is different for PC. But I'm only speaking from console. So uh, let's let's get to the Rose Harbor, so I can kind of show you what kind of gear that you're gonna need, what you're gonna look for. Uh, my gear is maxed out again to my preference. It is n by far not the best gear possible, but it is it is pretty expensive to roll the pieces I did roll. And then I'm gonna roll a couple pieces as well, and kind of show you, um, kind of show you what you're gonna be looking for. Now you could get lucky and roll a usable piece of gear within like 20 chaos, or you could spend like 100 chaos, a bunch of alls, a bunch of scours, and then exalt slam and not get the mod you're looking for, etc., etc. It happens. Just be aware that that's a possibility. So let's see. Let's go over our rogues gear, ally equipment. So if we go over here, most of my rogue gear is going to be pretty similar. Uh, for the most part on here, I just have increased job speed on most of my stuff. And then if I can, I'll put in, um, increased time before lockdown, etc, etc. For these, uh, cars specifically has plus one level so you can be placed in any other kind of... Uh, you know, just plus one level to all job levels means he can get, he can be placed in like a tier th a level three or level four instead of level two, or level three, etc., etc. All of my brooches are pretty much like this, where they have increased uh, rogue marker value from primary heist target, and if I can help it, I also have the currency dupe. All of my cloaks have reduced raising alert level while opening chests. And if I can help it, I have another mod like there with the reduced hiring fee, which helps to save you markers. And they're all generically the same. As you see, job speed, duplicate heist marker or duplicate currency, rogue markers. This one's just basically oh yeah, plus one counter thermogurgy for what is this? Niles, yeah. And then see this is reduced raising alert level so on and so forth and <coughs> I haven't put anything in a hook because hook is just garbage and then they're all they're all generically the same so um, obviously you can get stuff like this where it says grants the level 15 haste skill that's really good I would recommend looking for that but what you're going to be looking for mainly is basically what you want to do. Now I have the increased value for heist markers rolled on everything because that's what I want. If I'm going to be running a bunch of heists back to back, I want to get the most out of the, uh, the end result. And even though you can kind of enhance the, uh, you know, what you get out of the rest of it, it's just, it's not the same. So I got, I found these two pieces of gear and uh, basically what I'm going to do here is kind of show you the initial investment. So we're going to pull out 100 chaos, that's 80, 90, 100, and I need alpha means to alpha. So let's see, alk, alk, alright. So first things first, so we're going to look at our, our cloak here. This is a level 5 any job cloak. This is the highest tier you can get, and you only need, I think, up to 83 or 82 to get all the high rolls, if I'm not mistaken. All the highest tier, that is. And as I said before, with the cloak, we're going to be looking for reduced uh, reduced alert level with uh, with your jobs, right? Or with your... when opening chess. So let's just go ahead and... let's see. So right there, as you see... There's a notable that you can do also. It says, chance on opening a chest not to generate alert level. Now this stacks in Grand Heist, so if you have three tier ones, that's 30% chance to not generate any alert level when you're opening a chest, if you have three of them. If you have the currency or, you know, hundreds and hundreds of chaos, I would definitely roll this one alongside the, the other one, which is uh, reduced raising alert level when you open a chest. Let's see if I can find any other relevant mods. 
okay so right here I'm not gonna roll over this just because it has this mod and I like this mod so this cost me a couple chaos and this is a definitely a mod that you can you can hunt for five percent chance to not activate lockdown <coughs> in Grand Heist so this means that if you're at the end of your Grand Heist and you open a curio you have a five percent chance for that curio not to uh, you know to trigger the lockdown in which case you can open a second curio now the stacks so if you have three of your members with the five percent it's fifteen percent now I ha I've only ever been able to pull off like getting three items out at once but I've heard of people getting like basically a whole a whole room's worth if they're super lucky it's it's all luck obviously so we're gonna we're gonna keep this aside just to kind of show you like hey this is this is like a bare basis of what you can keep obviously these are the cloaks are pretty cheap if I go in here I'm gonna look there's 11 chaos there's 11 chaos again 20 fusings and these ones are probably what are these rolled well no he just doesn't know what he has and <laughs> so on and so forth 11 chaos okay and then obviously I could probably just offer, offer 5c for these ones <coughs> now let's get to our <coughs> to our brooch so if we if we look here we have the tier 3 increased um, increased rogue markers from primary heist target so there is a uh, there's something to be said that you don't really need to have tier 1 tier 1 to tier 3 is it's not gonna be like an enormous difference just keep in mind you're only ever going to be able to get this from your contracts. Um, I would definitely not settle for anything lower than tier 3, but usually what I do is I either get tier 1 with nothing else, or I get tier 1, 2, or 3 with one other modifier. And the other modifier is either currency dupe, or it can be it can be whatever you're far farming. So let's let's see if we can uh, we can roll this real quick and. Let's see. Primary or highest target, duplicate to contain breach splinters. See, this isn't bad. If you want to farm breaches, this is really good, except the, uh, <coughs> I would probably settle for like a tier two, tier two kind of setup, so we're going to roll over it. See, this one's actually really good here. This one set gives you a tier 4, which is not too good, but it also has tier 1 job speed, tier 3 uh, chance to duplicate basic currency, and a tier 2 chance to duplicate contain divination cards. So the tiers, obviously I said, like, you know, it's not going to matter too much between tier 1 and, and uh, tier 3. Tier 4 is pretty low, but it's still enough that you're going to notice an increase. So I would definitely maybe, like, throw this alongside a Gianna and run this on Gianna. And as you see, this is a pretty budget kind of thing. I spent, what, 12 chaos to roll two items. But this is, this is like, if you're going to just settle, right? If you're going to settle, you want tier twos, you want tier threes, you want just whatever you can get and to throw onto your rogues. It's not going to cost you a whole lot of currency. You just have to, you know, decide beforehand what modifiers do you want. So if you if uh, your goal is to run to the very end of Grand Heist, not opening any rooms, just running at the to the end of Grand Heist, then your best bet is to go chance to not activate lockdown in Grand Heist and put in th putting that on all your characters. So then basically you're just gonna reveal wings, run in, go to the end, uh, crack the curios, and hope you can crack a second one. If you're gonna run like I do, where you're gonna run basically efficiently. Um, not necessarily efficiently, but basically run, you know, without any kind of uh, discrepancy on what you're doing on other other things. For example, like I can use the reduce raising alert level in Grand Heist, and I can use it in Contracts. So that's not gonna, you know, be a hindrance to me. It's, it's gonna be used uh, all around. Now, as you see, I I can exalt Sam some of these. The, I just I just kind of settled for whatever I can get on the reduce raising alert level. These are all settles. I don't have anything too crazy on my cloaks. I did at one point, but it's or, or no, not not the cloaks. I think I mostly my brooches. I've spent most of my currency. 
rolling during highest league. Like this, I have double currency and highest target, T1. So yeah, it's... If, if you look, all my brooches are going to be rolled. These aren't going to be too rolled, but they're going to be decently rolled. And then these ones are just kind of whatever you can get. And this is basically what I chose, is reduce raising alert level. But, you know, that's just because I like running contracts and blueprints, not just focusing on one thing and only one thing. If you're focusing on blueprints, this is probably your your best mod. Because if there's going to be times where you're going to look at the curios and you're going to be like, okay, well, there's four things that are worth like 1x above, and I want at least one or two of them, or, you know, at least two of them. So this is going to definitely increase the odds of coming out with a, a bigger overall chunk from the end result of your grand heist. And I would definitely recommend rolling something like this. Uh, if that's your focus. If your focus is to open a whole bunch of rooms and open a whole bunch of chests and then take whatever you can get and settle for it, then go this route because this is going to reduce the raising alert level on all your chests and when you're in a grand heist, this stacks. So you have 33% reduced raising alert levels when you open chests. Well, thank you very much for joining me in this uh, heist, heist uh, series. I do appreciate anyone, you know, anyone who's willing to sit down for a little bit and kind of, and kind of listen to me rant and talk about heist. Heist is uh, definitely one of the more profitable things you can do. Um, this, it, I think I've pretty much gotten like 100C, a whole bunch of other, like I, I was almost out of alts, I'm at 100 alts now, and it's a really good method to get you just small currencies and get you know just get whatever you can get real quick you also get synthesized bases you also get decent stuff all around and uh it is it's definitely not a waste of time in my opinion it is a little boring but if you're if you're you know you have the patience to sit down and do it then it's definitely worth your time to do it so feel free to you know take a look at heist and and or you know have fun with it and if you don't have, if you don't decide to run the heist, just remember: if you decide to just pay the six chaos, you can sell the contracts, you can sell the blueprints, and you can sell the markers, and still make well more than your currency back. And then the times you do drop fully revealed blueprints, you're gonna get a really good killing. Like for if if I decided to run this, I have. I have the characters all maxed out to run this. I can probably open almost every single room here and this would be a really profitable blueprint. But because I don't have as much time as I'd like, I'm just kind of leaving it in the in the wings and seeing if someone buys it. Thank you very much again for joining me and hopefully